Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Gonzo Ewok channel, where today we're going to do a little podcast about various things. You're getting getting better with these introductions, the first I, I, two are shite, that I, one's not bad. Really, I, I thought that was pretty terrible. It's, it's was, the best we've done so I far. I was just rolling with it. Well. I'm, I'm Ewok. And I'm Gonzo. And what we're going to talk about, uh, yeah, we were just looking at some news that broke today, um, it appears to be on a, on a German website if it's been sourced correctly. And that's the news that an anonymous source has announced that well, an anonymous source is an, anon, an anonymous source has tipped off the website that Bethesda are planning to give a demonstration of twenty to thirty minutes of Fallout Four footage at E three this year. Mm. Um, it's it's interesting news. I mean, I always take these things with a pinch of salt. When you see things well, the whole like anonymous source and exactly the, web, it, it, website that might be big in Germany, but it's not one that I've ever heard of before. So it's it's an interesting. Could one. be trolling for hits. Could be bullshit. Ah, uh, it could be. Um, but Bethesda are doing a conference this year, yeah, in yeah. three, and they've never done a conference uh, in my knowledge. Obviously, they've attended the show. They've they've had a floor. Uh, they've had stands. They've had press con- uh, thing, Aye. sort of press events, but they've never had a full scale conference. Yeah. And you have to think, why would you have a full-scale conference if it wasn't going to be for something big? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, and I've said it I said it before when um, Bethesda, um, about a year ago, said, oh, we've got a, an announcement to make in the works, um, which I think was um, Elder Scrolls Online, I think. Right, yeah. Um, when they first came and said, oh, we've got a big announcement, and that was what it was touted, and I was thinking, at the end of the day, probably what they're going to announce. I'm hoping for Fallout 4, they're probably going to announce, like, Brink 2 or something. Something like that, you know. I was thinking, is it just I doubt they'd have a press conference to announce Brink too, considering that Brink was a massive flop. Yeah. Although I have to say, I really liked it. It wasn't bad. I remember picking it up on my PS3, and I think we played it a little bit multiplayer together. Yeah, it wasn't, I, it's it wasn't bad. One of three games I ever got the platinum trophy on. It helps that it was the easiest bloody game to get the platinum trophy on, mm. but that's neither here nor there. Point is, I put a lot of hours into it. What do, what do we know about Fallout 4 then? Do well, we know anything about Fallout 4? I know 4? absolutely nothing about Fallout 4. I mean, there's there's very little been said about it other than it's been rumoured that this is why uh, Bethesda might be, might be having this press conference. It, it could be Fallout Online, for all I know, that mm. gets announced. If I remember rightly, uh, the the original studio, well, some of the original team behind, uh, behind Fallout One and Two, did they not have the rights to Fallout Online, and it expired? I think they did. Maybe yeah. maybe a year or two ago, there there was a a, a case where uh, Bethesda and then was it was it Black Isle? Mm-hmm. Was it, it was Black Isle. Um, I think was, it was. There was an argument between Bethesda and Black Isle about whether or not Black Isle had done enough to meet their contractual obligations that said that they had the rights to do it. And as far as I know, they lost the rights and effectively uh, all of the rights to Fallout, including uh, a, an MMO, went back into Bethesda's pocket. So it could be that. Aye, it, it certainly could. And I mean, going off, um, you know, going off Elder Scrolls Online, you're thinking, well. On the one hand, you can kind of understand like a company going, "All oh, right, well, we did it for we did it for Elder Scrolls. It's a big IP. People love it. We've made an MMO. People are expecting Fallout. People anticipate Fallout. People love Fallout. Um, Fallout, in terms of like the 3D games, Fallout Three and New Vegas are a newer IP than the Elder Scrolls in that sense, in terms of being like a 3D game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so you kind of thinking, strangely enough, even though it's a slightly new IP, it's got a massive following. Fallout's Huge following, you know. Absolutely, amongst uh, the, the original fans of Fallout One and Two, and to a lesser extent, some of some of the other games that yeah, under that franchise, the, um, like Tactics, Tactics and, and aye, um, what have you, Brotherhood. Brother, yeah, well, yeah, you know the, the not good ones. Aye. <laughs> uh, but also, also like newer people, the younger generation, people who didn't really get into the the original sort of isometric turn based kind of kind of It's, an, it's game. an interesting one. I remember when Fallout Three first came out. Um, I'd kind of avoided the hype train. I kind of avoided most of the publicity about it. But back in the day, I'd played quite a bit of Fallout One and Two. Mm. And then, I, I doubled. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then Fallout Three was coming out. You mentioned, oh yeah, it's, it's coming out in a few days' time. I hadn't even been following it. Um, and you were like, oh yeah, we were working at the same place at the time. You're like, oh, after work we're going. Um, I want to pick up a copy on the way home. It's like, all right. And I thought, well, what the fuck? I'll, I'll pick it up. It's it's Fallout. How bad can it be? You know. 
um, and really, really enjoyed it. So it kind of threw me back into it after a long hiatus of not touching the original, uh, the original two games. Played oh, a bit yeah. of Tactics as well. Um, I mean, I was I got into it more as an Elder Scrolls fan than a than a Fallout fan. To be mm. fair, I, I doubled with the the earlier Asymmetric games, but came into it because I was a huge fan of Bethesda and loved Bethesda were churning out at mm. the time, which was big open world so fantasy epic, epic RPGs. Scale RPGs yeah. And I thought, you know, stick some guns and a post apocalyptic wasteland on that, and I'll buy that for a dollar. Aye, aye. And you know, really, really enjoyed both of them. Um, I know Fallout New Vegas obviously had its problems. I really enjoyed it though. I like the set and I like um, the feel of it. Yeah, I, I really do. I've been replaying it again recently, and it's a lot more stable than than it was on release. Certainly, I mean, I had real, real problems on release. I persisted with it because I enjoyed it so I much. Had, I, I had, had crashes. I, I'd picked it up on the PS3. I had I regular think. crashes, so I was sort of saving every five minutes. Yeah, I think maybe maybe once every half hour, I was randomly getting a crash at a loading screen. I'm notably developed by Obsidian rather than Bethesda, of course. Yeah. Um, Obsidian did a sort of similar thing with Knights of the Old Republic 2 in that they managed to craft an excellent game, good quality storyline and a brilliant sequel to a franchise that they weren't the original developer mm. on and also managed to make it buggy as hell. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Something going on there with the QA lads. Yeah, but uh, um, I still you know, rate them quite highly as a, as a good developer of good good RPGs. I think, um, unfortunately, I think with... Um, with um, Elder Scrolls Online, um, I think it's it's kind of somewhat kind of hampered the um, the experience for a lot of people. I don't think that's been particularly well received. I, I didn't buy into it because I was very much given the the impression that it was a standard hotkey combat based kind of RPG. And yeah, and it's not what you look for from as, one of those games. Yeah, as much as I would like to explore the world that they've put together and love the idea of going across the whole of the the Tamriel continent. It's, I it's don't want to go across when I'm using me. one one to use a spell and two to use me potion and three uh, that, to do that said, I, I probably yeah. doubt that uh, if, if this Fallout will be an MMO. I think it will be a more traditional Fallout game. I really hope so. Um, I expect it'll be uh, built on uh, an upgraded version of uh, Skyrim's engine. Was mm-hmm. that the Radiant engine? Is that what they call it? I think so. I can't remember the name. Um, maybe that was the Oblivion engine. I can't remember. But I, I expect it'll be built on an up engine rather than an engine of its own mm-hmm. I'm anticipating that because it looks likely to come as part of a Bethesda conference that it will be Bethesda developed and not outside source this time nice which I look forward to see uh, and other than that I really don't know what to expect from it no I mean I haven't got any idea of settings protagonist stories nothing really I mean, it'll have death just... calls and it'll have that yeah. and that's good enough for me probably super mutants I look forward to see where they're going to bring it um, if they move it further into the future than, than what we've had in the timeline so far I mean we've already experienced sort of building a, a nation state almost with the new Californian Republic and, yeah, yeah. and Caesar's Legion so will it be going further than that Could or be. I'm, I'm will it thinking, be sliding backwards will it be a sideways story rather than a sequel I'm or a thinking prequel? towards the end of Fallout 3 mm. and I'm thinking potentially something set in like Enclave territory or something you know really kind of pushing out and something where it would feel potentially very very different maybe well, like a wasteland the, with a very dark um, sort of dark sort of post post industrial society well, in was, the middle there was the time in between Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas, where there was the war between the Enclave and the New Californian Republic, which yeah. which could feature. I mean, the I'd be very surprised if we don't see the Enclave at all. Yeah, I mean, in the last two games, the Enclave have kind of made a bit of an appearance. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I don't want to go into spoilers. I can't imagine there's many people listening to this who haven't picked it up and played it at some I mean, there point. wasn't a, a huge amount of, of Enclave presence in New Vegas. But no. There was a little quest that revolved around some of the old yeah, remnants. Yeah, there was not the... some of the items and some of the stuff you could find kind of like sort of tip the hat to them a little bit. And, you know, certainly the lawn when you're talking with people and they're talking about stuff that's been going on, I mentioned, but... Um, so I mean that would be I would be I'd be cool I'd be cool with that I'd like to see that you know mm. plays one of the baddies yeah yeah it could be, be interesting aye, something a bit different you know I mean I'm still excited about what uh, what Bethesda churned out as a as a developer in terms of the RPG content I loved Skyrim yeah for those like big budget sort of like huge um, um, huge sort of epic ones. Co- couple of hundred hours into Skyrim and I know people who've got a lot more than that yeah I still, I still get a lot out of it now a lot of people said Skyrim was kind of like um, was kind of like dumbed down but I think it was a lot of people were kind of sore because it wasn't like Morrowind you know well um, a lot of people said the uh, Oblivion was dumbed down from Morrowind Wind, and yeah. then a lot of people said that Skyrim was dumbed down from Oblivion, and 
In some aspects it was, and in some aspects it wasn't. Uh, I think I, it's not so much dumbing <coughs> down for me personally. It's just a case just, of refining, streamlining the process. I, th- I think still for, takes. I think it's very easy as as a gamer to see your favourite games through through rose tinted glasses, mm. and then when a sequel comes out and it does something different, you you dislike it because it's different. Aye. And you know, I've fall, I've fallen into that trap before. And for the record, I think I probably had the best experience that I've had with an Elder Scrolls game. With Morrowind, see for me it was oblivious. <coughs> well, Mor- Morrowind really sucked me in, and even though that's probably the best experience I've had, I wouldn't say that Skyrim is not objectively better. Mm. If you know what I mean, I think it's just because that's where I I really got into the series. I played a bit of Daggerfall. Mm. I never felt it that much, but I really really got into Morrowind, and because that's the one that was my entry point and my first like, real getting drawn into the world of Tamriel and, and mm. the law behind it then that's probably why I love that game so much and everything that's a change changes a bit about that still a kick ass game though <clears throat> but yeah I, I've still got hundreds of hours playing all of them aye aye no I mean I, I'm, I'm excited to see what happens there there's some of the sort of big gaming events of you know of the year that come out for me they always are um, I remember when Skyrim came out and we'd both taken a couple of days off work I took a full week off work I, I think we, I took three days but off but we, we met up every day at lunchtime to talk about what we'd been up to in Skyrim aye, aye, this, really is be, this is before we used to like record this crap but we were having these ridiculous the, conversations before then it was the then. foundation for it really wasn't it yeah I remember um, you'd ordered your copy online and it didn't turn up on release day until later on that day yeah, um, yeah, and you, you, you I went out and got it. in the store, so I went and picked it up. And I was gutted about that. Why did I just go to the bloody shop? I like played the first like sort of opening fifteen minutes when you're on the back of the cart sort of thing, mm. and I was like, right, you, you need to, you need to go now because I'm going to play this, and you need to not spoil it for yourself. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was um, it was really good fun, um, and certainly they're one of those kind of set piece kind of games that when they come out, it's enough for me to take a bit of time off work. You know, I don't pull a city or anything; just take the time off going. And mm-hmm. enjoy them for like a good couple of days. So you always get judged a little bit by the people that work, don't you? Don't oh, what are you doing? What are you, what are you taking the time off for? Are you going somewhere? No, there's a new game coming out and I want to don't play. Don't do a shit. I had to explain to them why Did I needed a couple of days told them for, you know, why I needed a couple of days off in June. So I uh, got, uh, got this land down south. Ah, that would be fun. And I explained what a land was. And then they're like, all right. It's a bit weird, isn't it? I just, I just say it's a party where people bring their PCs. Yeah. Um, so kind of explaining that them at work. And they're like, all right, it's a bit bit weird isn't it it's like, well yes it is yeah it, it, it really is but you know it's, if, if that's what you like that's what you like it's no different to somebody saying i'm well into music and my favorite band's coming to play at a festival so i'm going to the festival you know i, th- I think we've kind of accidentally moved on from fallout 4 there but i think we're going to leave it saying that we're both pretty excited over it and we'll, we'll look forward to yeah, seeing this, what there is i mean as an aside i think this new story hokum i think clickbait there's enough of them going around i, th- I think it's pulled out of it i think whoever's written it has pulled it out of their arse but Safe in the knowledge that the odds are that if there is going to be a fallout announcement. They're going to announce, yeah, something tasty. And then, they, and then they can turn around and say, you see, we told you, we're telling the truth. Yeah, and yeah. With absolutely no basis. Well, Playing the odds. If it turns out it's set in the enclave, you heard it here first. That's all I'm going to say. Absolutely. Inside source from Bethesda told us that you get a play as a member of the enclave. Aye. You heard, it, you heard it here. That's not clickbait. That's not clickbait. That's genuinely 100% true. <laughs> <coughs> Aye. So, what are we going to talk about next? We haven't really planned this one out as much as I wanted to. It's been a bit of a slow news week since uh, we last recorded our podcast. Uh, well, I think it's been a bit of a slow week, but to be honest, uh, it's just been bloody uh, election, election, election over here. And uh, Yeah, yeah, we're recording this day of the election. Day, day of be, the election. I'll be going out to vote after I'm, uh, after I'm done with the recording for the night. That will be the UK election for those of you who aren't in the UK. Well, have you got time to vote? What time do the polls close? Well, they don't close till about 10 o'clock. Oh, lovely. Today, right? Lovely, jubbly. Waiting for me, missus, to get in. I said, we'll go together. Oh, isn't that sweet? Uh, You've got to make sure she votes the right nice way. Nice, don't say I don't take anywhere. Nice, down to the polling station afterwards. So, yeah, well, we don't have anything, but you mentioned maybe talking about Sony. We bought both Playstations recently. What, what did you have in mind? Um, well, no, it was just something that I picked up. I do keep my eyes out on gaming news just because I'm interested in, in you know, in the hobby and I'm interested in the industry. Um, but as I said, there's nothing really that's made us kind of stop when I've been checking um, like our Twitter account at, um, at Gonzo Um Thanks, plug. Thanks, plug. Um, what was it again? Um, at, at, at Gonzo Ewok. At Gonzo Ewok. That's easy to remember. It is. You're Gonzo and I'm Ewok, yeah. so it's at Gonzo Ewok. Yeah. No space, no scope, no hope. I'm rapping, and I didn't even realise. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was just something that I'd picked up that um, 
apparently big upcoming games um, um, games convention I'm sure it was GDC but I might be wrong on that might need to um, drop some sort of like errata into the uh, um, into the video you know we'll not bother we'll, yeah, just, we'll, we'll, we'll just be wrong and live with it but in any event the spokesman came out from Sony and said that they're not going to be attending which is the first time they've done that in, in some time but to be fair I mean GDC when I, when I used to work for the website, it's not something that we ever really covered because Gamescom was immediately after GDC. Mm. And GDC was a lot more... I mean, you, you get good news there. Mm. There is news comes out, but it's a lot more industry-centric than mm. it is public-centric. So we found that it was better to focus our time on... Hardware developments, what they mean for yeah. your, your next IP. But yeah. we, we found it was better to concentrate on our time on prepping for Gamescom and getting to Gamescom and covering Gamescom. And if uh, there was yeah. anything significant came out of GDC, it would also come out in Gamescom. Yeah. So it's not, a, it's not a conference that I've really followed that much, to be honest with you. So I don't know how big a deal it is I don't know how close GDC and Gamescom are this year I watched it's them. normally just like a week apart even I watched them people, I watched, come, people go straight from GDC I to was Gamescom. watching Twitch broadcasts from GDC last year and there were some interesting bits and pieces coming out and some you find that some, some development houses and some developers use it as like an early showcase for some of the games that they're working on or, but predominantly from like a hardware background and saying look this is, a, this is built on a new engine this is what we're doing sometimes see like tech demos coming out and it maybe gives you a bit of an indication what they're planning on doing. If the Sony aren't there, then the implication is there's no new hardware expected, unless they're going to pull something out of the bag at Gamescom and go, haha, look at us, we've got a full be, just we've got a full VR headset and we're going to get it to retail before the Oculus Rift even touches the sides. Of course, it's that, that idea of, you know, that kind of stealing a march on somebody as well, kind of play down kind of what you're doing. Cause, and what the what the, the spokesman had said was, well, we're skipping this, but we are going to be making some very big announcements later on this year. uh uh-huh. And that's really kind of why it kind of piqued me interest. And I was thinking, kind of like what I was saying before, I before there, I mean, what, what the possibilities could be there, you know? I mean, are we talking something like new hardware? Are we talking some sort of expansion to the PS4? Are we talking that they're going to bring out suddenly like an arcade version of the PS4, which is, um, you know, going to come down in price? Are we talking new hardware or accessories for it? Are we talking about. I've just bought the damn anything? PS4. I couldn't give a toss about new hardware. <laughs> what I want is, is good quality games. Aye. Um, in particular, exclusive games. Uh, although I hate, I, I, you the, know, the libraries. The libraries for the next generation consoles. I don't think are anything fantastic. I'm not seeing anything. In, in general, I hate the idea of exclusive content because it makes me go out and buy a, buy a bloody console, and it really bugs me to hell that I have to do that if I want to play a game. Essentially, I bought a PS4 so I could play Bloodborne. For me, the the, the perfect um, the perfect thing that I saw was a video, and it went it went viral. It's it's good couple of years old. It was about Assassin's Creed Four. There was a sign hanging up in a supermarket and it just said exclusively on Xbox One and um, exclusively on PS4 we talk about and Star exclusively Wars. coming to PC. We talked about Star Wars Battlefront um, recently. Yeah, I think it's Star Wars Battlefront, but it's got the most bizarre exclusivity license in the... Only PlayStation are allowed to put their logo on Star Wars Battlefront adverts. So it would say like Star Wars Battlefront coming to PS4, but it's actually multi-console release. Mm. So they've bought the rights to appear on the advert to alone. appear as though it's just going to be on PS4. As though somebody who's got an Xbox is going to buy a PS4 to get Battlefront on it, even though they've already got a friggin' Xbox that's yeah, already on the Xbox. It is. Some of these, um, some of these sort of mar- they, that's they the, clearly the really work. Sinister, dodgy side of market no, it's ridiculous. They, these these things clearly time. work because if they didn't, they wouldn't do them, and they've got a hell of a lot of money to put into user research it's, than I do. It's just mental. You're just duping some poor kids' parents into spending three hundred and fifty notes that they don't need to. Spend spend for a 50 quid game but they never say it's exclusive they just say it's on PS4 coming to PS4 <clears throat> and everything else they don't get me wrong I like my PS4 I've got, I got GDA on it which is perfectly fine um, I've got Bloodborne I love I like. some sports games I know that both you and um, our other very close mate are playing it on um, on PS4 so I will be picking it up on PS4 even though I'm playing it very hard on the uh, the PC as well, but I'll pick it up just to play with you guys it's part of the fun yeah, I'm, I'm liking it. it it's got the exclusive that I needed, which is Bloodborne, and that's why I got the PS4 over the Xbox. Uh, and I was tempted to get the Xbox for Dead Rising 3, yeah, which was an Xbox exclusive. Yeah, and I thought, you know what, I'll I really want that. I'll wait until one or two other games come out and that are really get, fancy, uh, and then get, get an it. Xbox. But then Dead Rising 3 came out on the PC. Yeah, so Total the surprise. PC. Yeah, yeah. But I got that. Um, that's that's the only uh, the console wars aside. To me, it's all about what games I want to play, and 
you know, I wanted to play Bloodborne enough yeah. to buy an entire console. The whole idea, just to do so. the whole idea, of the console wars as well as just it's excellent marketing. If you think about it as well, this idea of building up your little legion of fans. It's not the same as it used to be, man. It's not like the old Nintendo versus Sega days when yeah. everyone was. Frothing at the mouth, fanboys. Was, yeah. was it was you play? Oh, I play Sega. Ah, you, yeah, you would yeah, get yeah, you would get beat up in the playground over which console you you owned back in the day. Hell, yeah, maybe you do now. We're we're grown ups now. Maybe it's still the same. Like yeah. It's, oh, um, you oh, you've got an Xbox. Your family must be poor. You couldn't afford a PlayStation. Nah, they're just insult- oh, the, the lovely things that kids just throw did. throw insults at each other in comment sections of YouTube videos. Mm. Yeah. At school, you on card if you had a proper console to play it on. <laughs> Uh, it was a, a strange old business, but in any event, I'll, I'll be curious to see what um, what Sony's big announcements are going to be. It'll be a, an interesting yeah, me one. Me too. I'll keep my eye on the on the prize I'd, at uh, E three uh, and, and Gamescom. I think yeah. you hit the nail on the head. Though what I'd like to see is some some nice games coming out for it because and this isn't like siding with one or the other. I don't think there's a particularly great library. I know it's still fairly early, but we're coming on two years for these consoles being out now. Yeah, where's, where's, where's the must haves? Yeah, where's the games? Where's the games that would really draw you in? I got duped just because I was playing shitty sports games and I like playing those and it was a, a frivolous kind of like oh I'll buy one so every now and again when something comes out I'll inevitably end up picking up like one of the Madden ones have that sit there once every six months pick that up for an afternoon and play around with it and, and I got you across. because I'd sell my mother for a Souls game <laughs> <laughs> because they are they are amazing Aye. Um, speaking of Souls games and, and, and Bloodborne um, I know this probably isn't something that you want to talk about but I, I want to briefly talk about strategy guides because I love them you do you've got such a collection of strategy guys um yeah I've got I've your, got, your, I've got your a Mrs. huge Bison collection of strategy guides very regular as well doesn't she she does yeah she in fact she got me the Bloodborne strategy guide uh, I bought Bloodborne um and the strategy guide wasn't out yet and she bought that for me and I played it played it for a bit and then I stopped playing waiting for the strategy guide to come along right and a lot of people think it's like akin to cheating akin to the old oh, I wouldn't, sort of I wouldn't go that far but I really love them, and I don't love them because I actually use them to get through the game. That's not what a strategy guide's about for me. Mm. I'm not like, oh, I'm coming up with this new level on Bloodborne, so I'm going to read the strategy guide for this level and read the map and find out where all the items are, or, oh, I'm, I'm about to come up with a boss, so I'll look up the boss. Or not, not even, oh, I'm stuck, so I'm going to look at how to get past yeah. this bit I'm stuck on. I don't even do that. What I like to do with strategy guides is play the bit and then once I've played that bit go back and read about it mm. because I'm not as I'm not an obsessive obsessive completionist when it comes to games um, I don't chase trophies and steam achievements I don't try to 100% things you're not a child but I really like to immerse myself in the game so if I have missed something I don't mind that I've missed it but I want to know what I've missed. Are you talking? And I, I want to like, collect every scrap of lore and every little e- and see every little Easter egg and stuff like that. Setting my store out, I've never bought a strategy guide. Um, I've never had a strategy guide. I've never had any compulsion to go out and buy a strategy guide. Um, I think I've looked through maybe a couple when I've been around at yours and they've been out. We've been mm. chatting and maybe pick one up and flick through. I it. quite often leave them in the bathroom. <laughs> good toilet. <laughs> they make they make good toilet read. <laughs> Um, for me, and, and don't get us wrong, I'm, I don't think, I, I wouldn't class it as cheating. Um, I don't think that that's what they are. And at the end of the day, I mean, if I'm playing a game and I get stuck with it, I'll persist for a while if it starts pissing us off. I might hop onto a forum, but I'm not looking for spoilers. I'm just trying to get some ideas on how other people have yeah. done it. And if which anyone, is wanted, to a strategy uh, if anyone me, wanted to cheat, you just go on game FAQs or something like yeah, that. Yeah, just find the cheat and use it. Yeah, there's a, there's a world of difference. Um, but for me, it's purely because I like that sense of exploration and it's interesting that you say that like you'll play through a section and then read about it afterwards yeah um, like, that's a thought that's never occurred say, to us Fallout or Skyrim um, like where you've got missions where you can go one or two ways you can side with this guy you can side with that guy so I'll play the mission and I'll side with a good guy right. and I'll go oh that was really good get a strategy guide out what happens if you side with a bad guy right okay then I, I. that sort of thing I mean there's so it's it's particular with I've, RPGs my obsession I've, I've done something similar on um, I think it was possibly Skyrim or possibly going back to when we were talking about Fallout mm-hmm. did something similar but I was just using forums and I was like I've made my decision this is what I've got and I would hop back on and have a look for a similar kind of reason but I've never felt the compulsion to go out and buy like a physical copy of something to then to their own and and keep a hold of you know yeah um, well to, to me it's probably just because they're a bit more well written than 
and somebody's forward post. Yeah, and yeah, like a, a, you can treat it like a story. Thirteen year old telling you how to how to do the bit you're stuck with. It's it's particularly with RPGs. I have got a couple of strategy guys for non RPG games. I think I've got Grand Theft Auto Four one lying around somewhere. And actually, Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Um, I had there was a mini strategy guide for that. Um, I think I'd pick that up, and it was. I was trying to do one of the one of the collectible bits. You had to go around and collect something, mm-hmm. um, something that was in there. And I bought it because it was dirt cheap. The game had been out for a while. I picked the thing up for like about three quid from a game shop, um, and I thought oh, I'll have a look at that. And what was nice was it had a map, which this was during my student days. This came out, so I had like intermittent internet access, and it was nice to have a full map so I knew where stuff was. Till I'd actually sort of learnt my way around, even though it wasn't huge. It was nice having a map, and then some of the pickups that were on there as well were. Were quite handy, so I can remember using it for that a little bit. So I tell a lie, I have had a, a strategy a guide. strategy guide, but it's never been something that's particularly appealed to us. I mean, I, I'm I'm not knocking it, you know, and I think the way that you're using it probably is more akin to if I was going to pick up a strategy guide. Well, you're the kind sense, of guy who like buys. Uh, like RPGs, role play games, uh, pen and paper role play games. Like you bought the Game of Thrones one. Yeah, yeah. Not because you had any interest in playing the no, Game of Thrones role playing game, but you wanted to immerse yourself in the law. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's almost exactly what I do. I uh, no, I totally get that. I mean, the, it's the Song of Ice and Fire role playing game. And the reason that I bought it was that ostensibly what I wanted was there's a really good companion guide, which is like set in the scene of like Westeros. And gives you a really good insight into the different families, who's there. Very minor characters that I mentioned in the book. It's fleshed out. It was fleshed out with the help of um, of um, George Martin. Uh, George Martin as well. He had an act of hand, and I think two of the two of the sort of super fans that help run his website and keep him right when he's writing the books. One involved one of these like uber nerds that know everything about what he's written better than he does. So and he refers to them a lot, and he's like, "Did I kill that guy off yet?" And they're like, "No, no, he's still alive." You give him some horrible wasting disease and threw him in a pit, but he nothing said that he died. And they wrote it, and it was really, really good. But to make full use of that, I then went out and bought the rule set for the game, so I can understand if it's saying he's got these following statistics and these following abilities. What it means. What it means in terms of the game, and then that gives you an idea of what it would actually be like in terms of that world and that lore, and makes it a bit richer. Which was expensive. I mean, the thing itself. The companion guide was like 27 quid, I think. It was expensive. Um, the rule set was only about 18. But it was that, that like sort of player and... But you get the enjoyment out of it. And it's, yeah, a sim- yeah. it's a similar thing to what I'm doing. You may not be using it for its intended purpose, but you, you're using it to sort of enrich your experience. Yeah. So now when you're reading the, the Song of Ice and Fire books or you're watching the Game of Thrones TV Yeah, and minor characters mentioned and, and you go, a bit I about. know them. Yeah, yeah. And, and you just understand a little bit more about that world. Yeah, yeah. And in, in games like Skyrim and Dragon's Dogma and big, huge scope RPGs, there's a lot of love gone into creating those worlds and, and the lore behind them. And I really love throwing myself into that. Aye. It's why I like reading bloody sci-fi novels and high fantasy stuff because it's it's not just about the story it's about the world that ah, it's set, it set. yeah and I can see where you're coming from from that it's a, you know I mean ultimately though it boils down I still can't see myself being a person that would go out and, and like buy a strategy guide and I think certainly the proliferation of the internet and forums probably hasn't done strategy guides a huge amount of fun you'd, I would you'd, imagine you'd be very surprised um, you could flip them for a good profit Right, um, because they tend to come out around the time the game comes out, and limited production will they'll, disappear they'll, when the games. Yeah, they'll, sort of they'll print off, them for maybe a sale. month or two, and then they'll, they'll disappear. Um, oh, what's that one? Dragon Age Origins. Mm. Um, I bought the game. I bought the strategy guide at the same time. Lovely hardback strategy guide. It was fantastic. Mm. Um, it was fifteen quid for the strategy guide, and I played the game for a bit, and I didn't really like it, and because I didn't like the game. I wasn't that no interested point. in the law yeah, behind yeah. the world. So about four or five months after, I sold the strategy guide on eBay and I got 50 quid for it. That was Dragon Age Origins. You that was say. Dragon Age Origins. I, I, quite, I quite like Dragon Age Origins. It was the first one of the Dragon Age series that I picked up and played mine. Uh, and I, I, I know enjoyed it. it. I've noticed that about... I, I don't sell a lot of my strategy guides. I like to keep a hold of them. I've sold two. Hmm. So Dragon Age Origins, bought it for 15 quid, sold it for 50. And uh, Fable 3. Yeah. Um, I bought that for about 20 quid and it sold for about 35 so um, there's there's profit to be made in them. They're obviously collectors' items, and I can respect that because I, I collect the damn things. Yeah, yours yours mostly spend most of the time on like a bathroom floor though. They do, yeah. So. Um, 
Do you, did you mention that in like, your eBay description when you're putting it on? The, the ones that good I condition, saw, bit pissed in. The ones that I sold were actually in genuinely good condition yeah. uh, because I wasn't into the games that much, so yeah. they didn't see much use. You're a nice guy. You wouldn't flip something and feed somebody dodgy lines anyway. To, to be honest, I felt a bit bloody guilty taking 50 quid for something I bought for 15 quid. Aye. Regardless of how much the demand was, I wasn't expecting it to go for that much. I stuck it on eBay well, and that's how much it was bid. There we go. Ewok's top tip. Buy as many strategy kinds as you can get your hands over. Hold on to them for six months to a year and then sell them You'll for three your, times. Yeah. Triple your yeah. profit. Aye. My top my top tip of the day. There you go. Go forth and multiply with our viewers. You'll enjoy that. Or listeners, as we should say, for podcast listeners. purposes. Um, it's been quite a short one today, but I don't know about you. I've got, I've got very little left to left to talk about. No, I mean again, it's, as I said, it's, it feels like it's been a bit of a short week. I think perhaps it's, in... perhaps it's not been a slow week. Perhaps we just record too often. Oh no, no, I think, I I think, think a lot um, of podcasters do like one a month. Yeah, but they'll maybe do like a three-hour podcast like once a month, where there's like a fair bit to talk about. I'm just having a quick check on Steam as we're chatting here as well. Just on the off chance, is anything that's um, big and upcoming? There's um, nothing that's big and upcoming, but there's a game that I've never which heard of. Three, which are three? Which are not far off? Oh, and now I've got nothing to say about that because I've got The Witcher one and two, and I haven't played them yet. It's an interesting one. Witcher totally went by his. Um, Witcher two, I picked up. Oh, you see now, I, I can't couple of do hours, that. But I couldn't go I into can't it. do. I can't go into the second game of the series and just pick it up. Yeah. Um, um, he says having never played Elder Scrolls Arena, but played Elder Scrolls Daggerfall. Uh, ah, yeah, I know. <laughs> but um, which are which are two? I couldn't really get on with. But you know, trying to trying to avoid the hype train. Which are three is is looking pretty interesting. Part of it is just thinking though, I just want to get it so I can kind of like stress the the PC that meant the world a little bit. Just put it on and crank it up to see what I can. See what it can handle. Have you seen this Warhammer Forty Thousand Regicide on Steam? Warhammer Forty Thousand Regicide. It's effectively battle chess. It's it's chess with Warhammer figures, except it's not because you can like throw grenades and shoot things. It's got really positive ratings, but I can't help by looking at the trailers that it's absolutely gash looking. It looks yeah. really dull and tedious. But saying that, it does have really good ratings. Well, it's, it's not an, enough to tempt me to fucking buy the damn thing. Well, it's an interesting one because, of course, originally Games Workshop were incredibly protective of their license. They held on to it. They maybe had a couple of preferred suppliers that they would allow to make a game. And now there's all sorts of shit. Yeah, they basically they just they pimp out the license to just. A, I mean, look at the amount of like mobile games that are coming out that are in the Warhammer Forty Thousand um, universe. We've got loads amateur, of indie games. Amateur and uh, sort of amateur bedroom developers. And don't get us wrong. Like I'm not saying oh small developers bad. You know how much I love indie games. But, but it used to be the time that are, a, a little a little one man developer or little two man developer teams would come up with like a fan based Warhammer game and Games Workshop would step shut in it and down. shut them the fuck down. There was a um, like an ASCII based um, Warhammer forty K tabletop version that was being worked on and Games Workshop sniffed around for ages with these guys making a very basic where the mechanics and the rules were exactly as you would expect from a tabletop version. Which for somebody that doesn't have like all the pieces and all the rule sets and like is is into that kind of like that kind of um, game anymore, that tabletop game. Um, it sounded great to me. You could play it online, and it was very basic graphics, but you could hop in, you could look at it, play around with it, and the 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 killed it, the killed it, st- they got wind of it, um, and they killed it, stone dead. But now, of course, everybody's coming along and making um, these Warhammer games. Um, I'm, I'm just looking at a few random ones. So we've got Warhammer Regicide, that's by Hammerfall Publishing. Uh, we've got Warhammer Forty Thousand Dawn of War. Um, okay, well that's not a small development. No, that's that's, that's Sega uh, that's, Relic. Uh, yeah. Um, what's this Warhammer Forty Thousand Armageddon by now, Flashback that, Games? Th- that was Southern. quite a good game back in the day. But uh, I think it's I'm, an old. It's an old game that's came across to a. I'm thinking of. I'm thinking came of across across the other games we've got. Obviously, we've got the Bloodborne series. There was um, Space Marine. Bloodborne, what am I talking about? Not Blood Bowl. Yeah, there's the Blood Bowl games. They're they're, they're um, pretty good fun. Space Hulk. Them. That's that's a small developer, Space Hulk. That's that's quite good. A lot of people complain because they're saying it doesn't play like a video game and it doesn't it plays it exactly like the board, like game, the board game. game Space Hulk, which I enjoyed when I was younger. Um, there's there's Space Marine um, and what was it? Um, Assault 
ki- assault kill assault team or kill. something like that. Which um, were shit third person clone like there's, there's the other one, I forget the name of it, but it, Mordheim or something like that. It's like Necromunda, but in the Warhammer rather than the Warhammer 40k universe. Sort of like gangs of sort of gangs fighting in the Warhammer universe. Yeah, I think it's called Mordheim or something like that. Let's see. Didn't I didn't even know that. There we go, M- Mordheim, City of the Damned, and that looks all that looks alright. It's early access. It's by Rogue Factor. Never heard, Never of, heard of them. Focus Home Interactive Publishing though, no them. Uh, so yeah, it's very much like Necromunda, only it's in the the Warhammer fantasy universe Didn't rather than the Warhammer thing, 40, you know what? sci-fi I'll, universe. I'll keep my eyes on that one, that sounds, sounds fairly interesting. So yeah, like, dozens and dozens of these games workshop licensed games. Do you think maybe they're struggling in the, in the board game I don't market? think that's what it is, no. Um, you think they've just got the sniff of... Uh, yeah, I just think they've worked We, get, we can get here. somebody else to make a game and we get and money for doing nothing. And give us some cash. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's purely what it is, personally. The other side of things, though, um, we've got Total War, um, Total War Warhammer coming of out. Of course, Warhammer um, Total War. Yeah. Again, not much has been released about that since we uh, since we last very briefly touched. But on they it. were very quick to put it up on Steam for pre-order. Yeah, yeah, it's up there, and I'm sure it'll do. Uh, sure, it'll do very well. Well, it's got um, two sales, has not it? <laughs> yeah, Me and I'll, Lee. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll end up picking it up. Again, it's one of those ones. I'm not keen on the idea of pre-ordering. Um, I didn't pre-order it I um, no, I didn't either. I bought it maybe a week after. As it much came as out. I love it, it's the first time in a long time um, that I haven't pre-ordered a, um, a Total War game. We didn't pre-order Empire, but we did pick it up on release day. Yeah, um, but I mean, I, I really haven't, um, I haven't really missed a pre-order. Like I pre-ordered Rome, and don't get us wrong, I didn't have a huge amount of problems with Rome too when it came out. Me neither. Funnily enough, um, there was there was some bits of the game I wasn't too keen on. I'm aware a lot of people had issues with it, but for me, it worked worked fine. Those bits of balance that I would have liked to have seen changed. And that's ultimately the same with Attila. I think Attila is more polished as a game, certainly more stable across across the board than ROM 2 was. But, um, you know, there's still there's some decisions. I mean, the way that cavalry works, if anybody plays um, Attila, um, the way that cavalry works is a bit a bit weird. Like, light cavalry isn't any faster than heavy cavalry. So what's the point? So, yeah, so why, why would anybody ever choose it? And, you know, I mean, I think a lot of the complaints come out of people playing multiplayer. Um, but now I'm not really a multiplayer person. I play quick battles, historical battles, and I play campaign. I play campaign exclusively. Yeah. Um, I like to get a feel for the different units and the different styles using um, using custom battles. And then I like to play a long, drawn-out campaign of several hundred hours. I can rack up 300, 400 hours in, in a Total War game playing maybe one or two campaigns. And certainly, I mean, coming back to the point, Warhammer Total War is coming out. And I'm, I'm liking the sound of what they're doing. And I think if there was a developer that I would like to see do it, do a Warhammer game, it would be great of assembly. You know, I think that would be a really interesting one. And the fact that it's actually under the Total War banner, it's a strange one because I like Total War for being set in sort of like real historical settings. I like that. But it's an interesting departure and I think if anybody could do it well... We've been waiting for Warhammer Total War since we heard that Sega had got a license to do Games Workshop content. I I wasn't convinced it was going to be a Warhammer game. Well, it could have been anything. Um, It could have been a a Total War game. Yeah, 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 sorry. Wasn't I mean, it could have been a, a, a first-person shooter or a third-person shooter or an action or RPG. Just a, a new engine built from the ground up. Yeah, I figured it would be a strategy game, but I didn't know that it would necessarily be a Total War strategy game. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. But the point comes back to it. It's this idea that really it's, Games Workshop have been super protective of that license um, for years and years and years. We're, we're talking like 20 years, basically. They've had a couple of developers that they've gotten on board. You know, it seems with to mixed be... success with their games. There was Fire Warrior, where you're playing as one of the Tau. That was shit, first person attempt. I think attempt. it's the Blood Bowl series that Cyanide Studios did, because they kind of made one a couple of years ago, and it didn't do brilliant, but it did all right. Mm-hmm. And then they released a couple of expansion packs, and then all of a sudden, Warhammer everywhere. The other side of things is Games Workshop have always had quite aggressive marketing policies, they've always had quite aggressive business policies in terms of what they like to do. Not knocking them for it, it's just what they do. The other thing is, some of these games are like as a gateway drug for putting people into Games Workshop stores and buying miniatures and spending hundreds and hundreds of quid buying their armies. They get into that law and that universe. Want a small pot of paint and a paintbrush? That'll be 35 quid. Exactly, please. we'll have that discussion. And that's the thing, I think something like Total War Warhammer comes out, 13, 14 year old kiddies who've never set foot in like a miniature store or a model store before play that game, get obsessed by the law, get obsessed by the world, then it'll bug their parents to drag them into a games workshop store where the nerdly pimply people with the paintbrushes 
I'll flog them with the earth and the grank for huge fat stacks. That's the way that I think it'll end up going. And I think Games Workshop, very sensibly in their case, have cottoned onto this and said, you know what, those kids that we couldn't get into the stores, if they're on Steam, we want good shit on Steam to tempt them in. Never mind that. I mean, it's like we're saying this is developers that are not funded by Games Workshop releasing through publishers that are not funded through Games Workshop and sending them free money. Yeah, money for nothing. Yeah, he has God knows how many percentage of our profits just for us stealing these little miniatures. Uh, if anyone wants to make a Gonzo Ewok game, that's fine. We'll take 25% of the 69% profits. 69% of the profits. We'll take 25% of the profits. You take 25, I'll take 69. That doesn't leave them with much incentive to make the game. Not that they had much anyway, bear in mind. Yeah. We'll negotiate. Yeah, we're open to suggestions here. Hit us up. Um, So, if you want to make the Gonzo Ewok game, let us know. Uh, We're on Facebook. We are. Facebook.com forward slash Gonzo Ewok. That's the one. Or you can find us on Twitter, at Gonzo Ewok. Or you can go to our website, which is GonzoEwok.com. It's very easy to remember. It is, yeah. Gonzo and Ewok, and it's just Gonzo Ewok. Basically, if you put Gonzo Ewok into Google, you'll find us. You're not going to find any weird pornography featuring Ewoks. That's not a thing that, that exists, to the best of my knowledge. Rule. I've searched for it. Rule 42, is it? Possibly. I don't know. It's, um, it's a rule. Yeah, th- there will be a rule. But, um, yeah, it's you know you type that into any search engines, you'll, you'll find it in all our loveliness. Of I course, think. yeah. So do it. Do it now. And while you're at it, why don't you click the subscribe button that's about to pop up. And we love you very much, and we'll see you next time. I don't love you. Bye-bye.